Good day, hi, and welcome. All right. Aha! It's finally finished. Back up and running again. I don't have the right strings on here. These are these uh, octave strings, so it doesn't sound very good or whatever. But I just wanted to show you, yes, I have fixed it. Let's get this sucker out in the in the sunlight. You're going to like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty high, isn't it? But the way I had to set the neck, it was the only, the the angle on I on this neck for some reason got kind of funky on me. But let's show you the beautiful, I can get, it. there we go. Here's my dog. Contrast this with my dog. There we go. So you can see the, the nice gold in my sleeves in the way there. But basically what I did is I took uh, my wood glue gun, heat gun, and I wanted a glue that wasn't so super, 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 super permanent, right? And so I used it to re-glue the neck back on. So, there we go. Let's just, I don't know if I can catch all the angles. Just wanted to show you really quick. So it is back. Uh, it's holding. <laughs> the joint is holding. So yeah, it's a little high, but it, it uh, the, yeah, I got to fix up the bridge a bit. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe how high that is. Uh, so I got to fix up the bridge a bit. But um, yeah, my 1920 proc up is back up and playable again. I got to get new strings for it, obviously. The strings on it right now, the they're really heavy gauge strings. They're, I believe they're um, what they call octave strings. They were the strings that were on my Hornsteiner violin. And maybe I'll just put this down. I'll, I'll show you it a little bit later when I go to play it. I'll give you better views of it. But So I got all six violins up and playing again. This one, yeah, we'll go right back there where it belongs. Uh, what, what I did was just put some tension on it to see if the, uh, the neck was going to hold. But when it came apart... What I did was, um, I got the glue gun, he, let it get hot, and I set the neck so that it would sit more naturally in the, because I think there, there was, it was pulled down, so I don't know why there's such an angle on it uh, for that neck. I guess if it, if it pulls off again, I'll probably shim it or something like that so I can bring the fingerboard down a bit, but it just, so it would sit properly on the button. It had to be angled back like that. It just, it just is what it is. Uh, give me an idea of how high it is. Uh, this is my 1713 Stradivari. So there's, you can see the the neck, the fingerboard, how high it is there. And then again, and that thing you can ride a semi through, but it still plays okay. Like I mean, it's still. Uh, uh, don't, don't worry about the it being horribly out of tune there. So. Um, they might be viola strings. I don't know what they are. I think they're octave strings is what they are. So they're an octave lower. If you try to put them up to full pitch, you'll fold the thing in half. Uh, but it originally came on that violin there, my Hornsteiner. So anyway, it is up and playing. I just got to do a couple of final adjustments on the bridge. And, uh, yeah. And the thing about that one is it, I think it's my nicest. It, well, it's definitely the brightest and loudest. Well, the loudest one would be that one. The uh, softest sounding one would be this one and this one, uh, but this one here has a has a, this is the sweet tone one right here. The darkest sounding one is my beautiful Lionhead violin, my pride and joy with the resin virtuoso strings on it, and uh, then then I got the Hornsteiner. This thing is the the sound beast. It, it uh, it's probably from about 1930s 1940s. Uh, I like it. The sound is started. It took took about two years for the sound to come out of them. Now this one, if it gets better sounding over time, I'll be surprised because it sounded it's very bright, powerful sounding, very clear, uh, projects well. It, this is definitely my best sounding next to my two favorite sounding ones are this one and that one. Uh, but it's a long, long, long fingerboard on this one. Um, these two have the two biggest fingerboards. I think that one's even bigger. It's it's definitely the longest fingerboard out of them all. Uh, it's a 1920 proc up. This is a three quarter scale. I, I'm starting to like this little one. Um, it has a sweet tone to it. It's nice. This one. Start the sound's starting to come out of this one. It's starting to clear up a bit. Uh, you know, it takes a while because the, the the all these violins except for that one, we're all sitting in the same basement. For God knows how long, 
in a box. And I got that one for 75 and then put some money and work into it. This one I got for, I think, I want to say 45 bucks. Um, it needed some work. I had to, you know, the seams came apart on it a bit. and So I fixed that one up. This one I got for 100 and then I got about 150 in it. And then the neck folded on me. I was like, <gasps> no. But look at the, look at the, uh, I had to put viola pegs in there because the, 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 the holes were just too big. And then this one I got for a hundred as well. And, um, I had to do a little bit of work to it, but, uh, you know, like refix the bridge, but this one holds tuning very well. This one as well. Um, yeah. And then of course this one, I, my pride and joy here, my lion head violin. I love this one. Uh, this one I put the resin strings on it. Paid five fifty for the violin. Then I put I can't remember what I paid for the tailpiece. I paid way too much for that. Uh, uh, or I, I, can't, I can't remember how much the uh, chin rest was. It wasn't as expensive as I thought, but the tailpiece I paid way too much for it. Peter, but believe it or not, about two hundred on it, and it's just not what I wanted. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, so I got them all. But this one, I, I've got a lot of hopes for this one. Uh, as a player, it it it, uh, it looks great. I mean, it really does look great, and it sounds good. And I would like to get some obligados on this thing. Uh, again, I just got to fix up the bridge a little bit more. Got to take down the action just a little bit, but I wanted it to sit for a couple of days just to see where the action is going to be before I, I do the final bridge adjustment, like for the height. Because if not, uh, it either sits too high or if you, you take it down too much and it it's too much, you know. So it, it takes a little while, but uh, this one. I got the, this one is probably my best playing one, or the one that I intonate the best on. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, each one is different. Like there's, like I could play them all about the same, but it's just, this one is more the most intuitive because the, the spacing on it is, is pretty good. This one is, the spacing is really wide on this one, uh, and on that one. Uh, the three quarter, it's a little bit cramped because it's three quarter, but it, you know, it intonates well because it's, it's small, but it, then it's like, then you're a little bit cramped for certain things. So it just is what it is. All right, there we go. So my 1920 proc up is back and up and ready to go. There we go.